Hello, everyone. So welcome to the first session of the Logist STEM Linguistics Club. So my name is Charlotte, and um, the teachers for this club will be me, Lucy, and Matthew. So I want to have a quick overview of the Linguistics Olympiad in case you're new to it. So what is NACLO and IOL? So NACLO is the North American Computational Linguistics Open Competition. And depending on how you do on that competition, it will determine if you get into IOL, which is the International Linguistics Olympiad. So here are some recommendations of how you can prepare for NACLO. So you can take a foreign language class. Most middle schools offer foreign language classes, so you should definitely choose one of them because learning more about other languages will help you a lot. And there's also some linguistics textbooks. And here's a handbook from last year. I'll send all these links in the chat later. And the best way to prepare is just to do a lot of practice problems because there's a lot of them that are quite similar. So by doing a lot of practice, you can um, get used to these and get better. And then you can also watch the Olympiad workshop which was hosted by Zara and I'll post these links later. And this year, well, next year, NACLA will be on January 26th. So we're gonna get, on, get into some of the problems for this session. So, here's our first question. Okay, so versatile verb. In the left column below appear sentences in Wama or Yobu, a girl language of Benin spoken by roughly 50,000 people. These sentences appear in the writing system of the language. You do not need to know how to, the writing system's letters are pronounced to solve this problem. In the right column below, the translations of these sentences in English appear in a scrambled order. So the first part is to match these 15 sentences to um, their English translations. So you fill out here. I'll send you guys a PDF of this in the chat. And then, so this question is called versatile verbs. So they have one verb that can mean many different things. So here you they're asking what verb fits the best for all four of these definitions. And then the last two, you just translate these sentences from English to Wama and then Wama to English. So let me send this link in the chat. So you guys can open it up. And if you want, you can print it out because it's easier to work on it when you have it. So I'm gonna just, these questions are quite similar where they ask you to like match um, English and sentences from a different language. So I'm gonna just um, start off so you guys can kind of understand what it's like. So first we get a notice something that's quite obvious. So it's a sentence structure. So here there's a comma and there's only two that have commas. And they are these two. So we notice that they both have names in them. And Mari is quite similar to this, which means that 12, the answer for number 12 is E. And then we see that this name here and this, well, they have to be the other pair. So for number one, it's J. And then, the last name is this, and it actually has the same exact name here. So those are um, the three quite obvious ones. So then using the translations of these sentences, we can figure out the meanings of certain words. So for example, for number 15 here, we see that house and this word, so that means that this means house. So 
So when you look at other words that, other sentences that have this word in it. So here are two more. And if we look over here, we see that these two sentences also have the word house in it. So that means these two have to correspond with these two. So I'm gonna give a hint. So it shows up a lot. So N it equals I slash my. So here there's two Ns, which means it has I slash my twice. So we see that C has it twice. So we can put C for 11 and then for three, it will have to be each. So I'm gonna leave this up. You guys can work on the rest of the problem. If you don't quite get it, it's fine. And I'll explain the rest of it later. So these problems usually take um, a while to solve. So I'll give you guys about 10 minutes to work on it and then I'll come back and explain it.
Okay, so I'm gonna start going over the answers now. It's fine if you didn't finish all the all of it. So pretty much to solve this problem, I might want to go through the whole thing because it's gonna take a while, but I'll just like go over a bit. So we just like take the sentences that you already have like definitions for. So for example, here you see this word comes out quite a lot here and here. So if we look at number 15 is G, we see that this means 10. So that equals 10. And then we can also see that the word taka means um, what? So then you can just like see this and because this means 10, that means this question also this question how uh, this sentence also has to have the word hen in it so you can match four up with o and then the more sentences you get the more like words you have and pretty much you just use those words that you have and figure out the other sentences so i'm going to point out a few key things here so for example here we have the word gathered and here we have the word assembled. They actually um, are the same word in this language, which is this. And then another thing is number two, number for, for F it's it rained, but like, the real translation is the rain fell. And we see from like another question that this word dory, it means fell. So that means tando equals rain. So there's not really a verb for rain. So that's why they use this translation instead. And then one last thing. We see that here we have this word and here we have this word. So they actually mean the same thing. So it's just one is plural and one is um, singular. So if it ends in K-A, like for example here, yeah, it will be singular. And if it ends in SU, it will be plural. So this will be helpful when you go do um, the last two parts. So here are the full answers to um, the first part. So we have, so right here. 15, it's not written, but it's G. It's always in, it's also up here. So you guys can just check your work and maybe like write them down so you can look back at it later. Okay, so then I'm gonna look at the next part. So the verb is this. So a common mistake is that you see that in this sentence, there is lost in it. And so you might think that this is the answer, but lost isn't really a good verb to describe all of these. So like for most of these, like a general like definition would be like ended or like, broken, something like that. So that loss doesn't really fit a def, doesn't, loss doesn't really fit for all of these examples. So here we have this word, here and here. So in both of these examples, um, these are the respective um, English definitions. 
So pretty much you just look through and try to find the ones that are more like general because yeah. And then we can look at the last part. Won't be translating all of these, but I'll give like examples. So here we have the children gathered under the house. So that one, the answer for that one was, um, so for, it was, so this is the translation of this one. It's essentially pretty much the same um, thing, but like a few words are changed. So we see, so another thing is that prepositions, so prepositions mean like words like under, in, on, things like that. And we see that prepositions are actually at the very end of the sentence, which means that here under equals band. So we have to replace this, we're gonna replace this with children so the word for children is this and then the next words are the same the next word is the same and then instead of tree it's house and we also have figured out the definition for house it was um this and then finally band so that is the definition for the first one. And then I'll go over one of the English ones. Um, I'll go with this one. So we know that N equals I. And then we see that we've already figured out that suka equals car. So that means because this is the plural form, it's going to be cars. And then, so it's not going to be I, it's going to be my cars. And then if you look at um, sentence N, it's pretty similar. So number six is going to be N. So it means my cars broke down. So those are just two examples. I'll sh share the solutions for the other two. They're here. You can just check your answers. Okay, great. So we're gonna go on to the next question. So the question I just showed you, it's a really common, it like shows up like a few times per test. It's like you have English in another language and you have to like translate it between them. So you'll definitely see a lot of those. Okay, our next question will be all in the family. So many languages are related to each other for historical reasons. They may have a common ancestor or they may have borrowed words from each other. Linguists group languages into families or and branches based on their common ancestry. Here's a list of the translations of the first article of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 17 languages. So first one is English. So all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. And then here's the Latin translation. And then there's 15 other translations here. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna group all of these um, languages into these clusters. So then you can write it there and then here. And then lastly, it asks for which two are the farthest away from each other. So yeah, I'll send this in the chat. You pretty much just look for like similar words in each of these. So for example, um, an obvious one is here, have this and this, they, and then like they have like multiple words that sh are similar. Like this. 
So that means these two are going to be in the same cluster. So you want to look for other ones that may be similar to this. Um, you probably you want to find like multiple words that are similar because if, like there's only one word similar, it might not completely like it might be in a different cluster. It might just be like coincidence or something like that. And some are like distantly related, but like not like really closely related. So I'll send the link of this question in the chat and I'll give you guys like 10 ish minutes, five to 10 minutes to work on this one. And you don't need any previous knowledge of another language to do this. But like, like I said, knowing a foreign language, another one, for example, I take Latin and there's like a lot of like Latin derivatives that will be helpful when you do some linguistic problems.
Okay, so I am going to start explaining now because I do want to get through one more problem today. So for the first category, we're going to look at, so we see here below, there's another one with like, so like T-O-T -T sound. So here, for example, there's all these other ones. And then if we look to the second page, here's another one. It's not quite obvious. You really have to like look through like the entire sentence to figure it out. But it has this word here, which is common between the other ones. Here's another one, dignita. So it's really similar to the English word dignity because English does have a lot of Latin roots in it. And then that also shows that Latin is also in this cluster languages because it also has this here. And yeah, you can also see that there's like conscience here and like this word here and this in Latin. And so it shows that like they have like a lot of roots, but English isn't that closely related to Latin. So that's why it's in a separate category. So this shows, um, so the languages in this cluster are B, E, F, I, N. And these are actually called Romance languages, which include Latin, Spanish, French, Italian, like those. But um, Latin is like the main language where all of those are derived from because like romance has the word Roman in it. So then we can look at a few others. So this one, some of them are quite obvious. Some aren't as obvious. This one they have, so for H and O, they both have this word that is the exact same. And if you look closely, they have this two and here. So that means H and O are also in another cluster together. And then another one is C, it has VSI. And actually C, the two groups I wanna talk about like right now, so the one with H and O and the next one I want to talk about, they're actually really similar, but they are split into two categories because the first two are just a bit closer than the others. So it has this and this. This is similar because that's the B and like the BR word. And then this one also starts with BS. here and then this one's not quite obvious but it is similar it has like other words that show like this it just uses a w instead of a v like same here it has a v and has a w and this so yeah so the two i just talked about were h and o and then c l q Now, another obvious one that are like quite different from the others is K and P. They both have a K, K A I, which the others don't have. So, also other similarities like this word with the O I and this one. So K and P are another one. And then so we have the last three, and these are the hardest three because they are all, it's really hard to find a difference between them. So we have J, G, and N. So this one, if you like look through all the words, try to find some, some similarities, it's actually like pretty much like only a few small ones. But I guess for me, one thing that stood out 
this doesn't really mean anything but like jay has like this dash in it and like none of the other two do and then another thing is um g and and they both have this word here that like is like over like a and like in english so like kind of sore word like here and then like the y n and y and then if you scroll down uh for n there's in a and yeah so the, the other one there isn't and there are like some tiny similarities between those two but those that makes it different from j so that's why um those last two n and g are the last group so here are the answers And like I said before, knowing another language is really helpful because you can like make some connections. Like, like I said before, like I take Latin, so like it's a bit easier to like see the derivatives and similarities. And then the last part, um, here, three and six don't belong to the family. So the reason for this, we probably want to see the two, one, the two that have like only one in each like category. So that's English, number three and number seven. But like I showed before, number English does have some um like some words similar to Latin. So that's why English isn't one of these. So that's three. And then we can look at the ones that have like two. And then once again, H O, H and O, they have like the V S thing that um another one, I yeah, um South Slavic languages have so that's so then k and p are left so three and six don't belong to this family all right so i want to go over one last question so Breton members. Breton is a language spoken by approximately 200,000 people in Brittany, France. Part of the Celtic family of the Indo-European languages, it is distantly related to English as well as other European languages such as French and Russian. Below are some equations in Breton. So something to take note of here, there's not that many like math or like number problems in NACLO, but there are like a few. And an important thing to keep in mind is that they might not have like similar systems as us. Like they have like numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But like, what about like 100? Like what if they like use a certain word for a different number? Like they use, they have a word for 50 and like count by 50 is something like that. So that's important to keep in mind. So I'm gonna, if you guys, I don't want to explain it. So I'll just give you guys five minutes to work on it. You're going to see like some pretty obvious ones, like try, it's going to be three. And then here, this one, that equals two. So those are just some obvious ones to get you guys started. And then, yeah, I'll explain this in approximately five minutes.
All right, I also sent the link for this problem in the chat. I'm sorry, I forgot to do that earlier. And um, I'll just also send the links that were in the first slide. Okay, so I sorry for rushing a bit, but I I want to explain this problem. So here I just listed out some of the numbers I can figure out pretty much. So three and two are, are the pretty obvious one and one, but this one um for seven it's a bit less obvious. But like if you like say it out loud, it sounds kind of similar to like seven in other languages like Spanish. Same with nine here. And then here I figured out it was five because it's addition. So you can probably tell that it's gonna be five. So a really common mistake here is thinking that, so it ends in X. So it probably means that X is like something like 10, 100, something like that. So, Or it could end up be like, it could be like 13 or 30 or 300. So in this case, it's actually not 30, even though this may seem like the obvious answer. Because here it both ends in X, which means that here, if by that logic, then the answer should be this, because this would be 50, so five times 10. But actually it is the first one. So 13 plus 12 equals 25. And this is kind of hard to figure out. You had to like a lot of trial and error. So this actually equals 20. So 
so for later problems, so you see here it's 20. So it's actually 81. So we have 81 divided by nine equals nine. So, so like you see, there's not really any like hard math in this. It's pretty basic. So that means PEVAR equals four because it means 20 times four plus one divided by nine equals nine. And then here's another one. So this would be 12 times five and then try, it would mean 30 times 20. So that's the important bit of information. So I'll just list out some of the other one digit numbers. So here we have six, this would be 16 then. Um, this is four, oh yeah, here, this is 100. Because 100 divided by two equals something times. So we have two times something, let's say X equals another thing times, the, wait, sorry. A number divided by two equals something else times that number. So this actually equals one half. So you'll see that um, 50 is actually represented as which equals 100 over two, which equals 50. So here it's like 50. So this one, it involves a lot of logic in like most, so like in general linguistics problems, you don't need that much knowledge. You just have to like knowledge of like previous languages and things like that. It's mainly logic based. And that's why doing a lot of practice problems it's helpful because you can understand some like important like methods that will be helpful in solving these questions. So you just fill in the first question. These are the answers. Okay, and then the next one which means one person's eyes. So this one, I guess you would first assume that it would have um, the word unon in it, but it doesn't, none of these have that word in it. So it actually is B because one person's eyes, it's like, means like a pair of eyes, so two. So there's a two in this. And then the last one, this irregular number is going to be 18 because, well, first of all, I can tell from the first section, they have all of the single digit numbers except for eight. So it might imply that eight is like a special case. And then also we have try, which means three and this ending, which is shown here, and that is six. So since three times six equals 18, 18 is this irregular number. Okay, so that's gonna be it for the first session. Next week, Lucy, I believe, will be explaining or will be teaching. And thank you guys for coming and I hope you guys come next week. Bye. Bye. Bye, thank you.